Make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video for information about a LEGO Ninjago set giveaway. So back in January of 2022, LEGO released the Ninjago Core line which featured an all new building system. The core sets were a bit of a mixed bag, some were great, others were... yeah. However, the standout to me, at least, was the new Evo mechs. Unfortunately though, the sets only came with two and a half of these mechs, but I was really impressed with how these mechs fit alongside each other yet were still distinct. Zane seemed like a bulky, strong attacker, while Kai seemed more designed for speed. I really wished these mechs existed for the other four ninjas, so I decided to set out to do just that. I was going to design Evo mechs for Jay, Cole, and Nia, as well as give Lloyd a proper one. I wanted a bit more of a challenge though. These Evo sets were designed to be upgradable and customizable, so could I make these mechs using only parts from existing Evo sets? Before I started, I wanted to make sure I had a game plan. First, I wanted to make sure my mechs are going to fit in with the other two mechs that we already have. Taking a look at Kai's and Zane's mechs, there were some clear design requirements. I had to use the new SCCBS joint pieces for the arms and legs. I also had to use the new mech cockpit piece with the printed ninja tile on top. I needed to include a place to attach the banners. They needed to have some sort of unique weapon like Zane's saw blade and Kai's cannon. And of course they needed to all fit together but also have distinct features, not just be recolors of the same mech. Going in for Lloyd, I thought this would be really easy. From his 4 plus mech, I would have a gold cockpit piece as well as green joints. And for his distinct features, I wanted to give him lots of golden armor and maybe a large sword as well. But then when I started to think about the other ninja, I ran into an issue. You see, the new Evo cockpit and joint pieces only exist in a few colors. The joints are only in blue, green, orange, and yellow, but yellow's not allowed because that doesn't come in an Evo set. And then the cockpit only comes in gold, white, red, and gunmetal gray. I'm lucky that the villains of this way use gunmetal gray as one of their colors so I can reuse that cockpit for Nia. The blue limbs from Zane's mech will work well for her too. There isn't many other gunmetal parts in the Evo sets, but maybe we can take some from the snake vehicles, and possibly also some blue from Jay's dragon. And then for the distinct features of this mech, I was thinking maybe a spear, because that's her main weapon, or something else to make the vehicle more aquatic. Then moving to Jay, most of it's easy. I can of course pull blue limbs from either his dragon or Zane's mech. I don't really want to use any other blue parts from his dragon though, because that color fits Nia better, and I don't want them to have the same colored mech. Instead, I can take the darker blues used in this car. For his distinct features, I thought I could add some lightning pieces running up the mech and maybe a stud shooter, but the biggest issue with Jay I realized would be the cockpit. Of the colors available, none of them seem perfect. Red obviously is off the table immediately, but the others... I'm gonna have to just wait and try them all and see what I think works best for him. And then finally, what I think will be the biggest challenge, Cole. I can use the orange limbs from Kai's Dragon, I think gunmetal or gold would work pretty well for the cockpit. The issue is, Cole's main color is black, but Cole doesn't have a single Evo set. So the black parts we use will have to be from the accents on other sets. I'd have more at my disposal if I included the non-Evo core sets, but nah, this is supposed to be a challenge. I think I'll be able to do it with just these. And then in terms of distinct features, I think Cole's might should be the bulkiest of the bunch, maybe have drills or a large fist or something else that like fits the earth element. So, with all that in mind, of course, I didn't want to take apart the Evo sets I already had. I mean, come on. Who would ever want to take apart this guy? So I decided instead to go to lego.com and order the duplicates I need. So I decided to call up the LEGO Master Network and ask if they'd want to send me the sets for this video, and graciously, they agreed. So all I had to do was wait a few weeks, and... Four to six weeks later... There they are! I got four Zane's mech because it has all the parts needed to create a mech, so I wanted to make sure I have enough parts for four mechs. It might have been a little overkill, but I think it was the right decision. Two of Lloyd's four plus mech because I needed four total green joints, two for the arms and two for the legs. Two of Jay's dragon because there's lots of those blue colors that I can use for Nia and Jay. Two of Lloyd's car because of course it's more parts to use for Lloyd. And it also has a decent number of black parts that I could potentially use for Cole. And then I got one of Kai's fire dragon to get the limbs for Cole's mech. And finally, Jay and Nia's race car Evo, the side building of the set has the cockpit piece that I'm going to use for Nia. And then there's lots of blue and black parts that I can use for Jay and Cole. So now, it was time to start building. I opened the sets one by one and dumped all my pieces on the table. And after a few hours of work, well, let me show you the end result. So here is the final result. Here's all six mechs, both official and custom, together in one place. Putting these together was a ton of fun, and some of them came out very, very cool. So let me go through each of them. So let me start with Lloyd, who was the first one I made and who I expected to be the easiest. Because he did already technically have a mech, it just wasn't a very good one, so the goal of this was just to improve it. Plus, I had tons of green pieces from his car to work with as well. I thought this one would be really easy to do. Unfortunately, though, I felt like it was mostly the opposite. Because despite me having a lot of green pieces at my disposal, a lot of them just weren't useful for this mech, and it was a lot of the same pieces too, there wasn't a lot of variety both in the mech set and in the car set, so I felt very limited as to what I could do with this guy. 
So as such, I think he's my least favorite one of the ones I created, just because I don't think there's anything that unique about him. I was able to pull off the armored look that I was going for pretty well, I think. Like, the official Zane mech had a good bit of golden armor on it, but I completely covered Lloyd in it. The entirety of his legs covered in golden armor, his shoulders covered in golden armor, and he's got a little bit, like, at his wrist as well. The feet design turned out pretty well, in my opinion. Though with the armor being right here, it does leave posability a little bit limited. Like, despite the limited movement, I still feel like there's some wacky and dynamic poses you can get this guy in. For the cockpit, of course, I used the golden piece from the 4 Plus Lloyd mech, and that's how Lloyd attaches in there, I can take him off like this. Fairly similar to the Zane mech on the Kai mech, nothing too complex there, but that's just a look at like what it actually looks like on the inside. And then coming to the arms, the right arm is almost completely taken directly from the Zane mech, the hand's exactly the same, the armor's exactly the same. The only thing is I bulked it up a little bit with this golden piece right here just to add like extra shoulder armor. But then on the other arm I have that same shoulder armor as well as more armor later down in the arm. And then I have this large golden blade attached to the hand. The actual hand to hold the blade is a little funny looking again, I don't love how that looks. I wish the sets came with a green 1x1 that I could put right there, but unfortunately that was not in any of the sets. So if I had free reign of like all pieces, I definitely could have made this look a little better. But for the pieces at my disposal, I don't think this is bad. And I think this is good for play and posability. And I do think the large golden sword fits Lloyd pretty well. And then finally, there's the back of the mech. That is definitely the most unique of the backs of any of these mechs. The other three pretty much follow the same design standards that Zane and Kai's do. But I don't know, I guess I just made it more unique with this guy. But yep, that's about it for this guy. He has all the requirements. He has a place to hold a katana in one hand. He has a unique weapon, which in this case is a large golden blade, and his like unique visual characteristics is just being completely covered in armor. But now let's move on to the next one. Alright, next we're going to move on to what is personally my favorite of all these mechs that I created, and that is Jay's mech. For Jay's mech, I used the blue joints from Zane's mech, but that is the only time I used that shade of blue in this entire build. For the rest of it, I tried to do a lot of this bright yellow as well as dark blue and regular blue, and I think it all tied together really nicely. I wanted to go for more like an agile, fast attacker for this guy, so you may notice that his feet are less bulky than Lloyd's. And they're simple, but I think the design of them turned out fairly good, and there's a huge range of posability with them too. Like look, I'm able to have him come all the way down to the floor and shoot out the lightning blasts. Then moving up the leg, it's fairly sparse overall, lots of different colors, it was just sort of what worked with the pieces I had. Definitely not the prettiest it could be if I had all parts at my disposal, but for what I had, I think it actually turned out fairly nice. At one point, I had lightning coming out the tops of the legs, and it looked really cool. The only issue was it really restricted the legs movement, so I decided to scrap that and move the lightning elsewhere to make this guy a little bit more poseable. And then coming up to the torso of the mech, the only part of the mech that I actually don't like is this cockpit piece. I chose white because I think of the colors available to me, it looked the best for Jay, but it definitely is not perfect. This would look a lot better if the piece was available in light yellow or blue. So if this piece ever comes out in that color, I will definitely be replacing this. But I don't think white looks bad, it just doesn't really fit with everything else. In my eyes though, I kind of see it as the core of the lightning where it's the brightest, and then the white goes out into yellow and it becomes more blue as you get to the hands. At least that's how I justify it in my head. But yeah, the alternatives were gunmetal gray or gold, and I don't think either of those really fit the vibe of this mech. But open the cockpit up, you can see this is where Jay's attached. Again, very similar to the other mechs. He's not as closed in there though, I guess it's a lot more open. And then coming to the arms, so the arms are by far my favorite part of all of this. So I used the jaw piece from the Thunder Dragon turned upside down as shoulder blades, and I think that looks so cool. Like, I just put those on there out of curiosity, and I was just sort of blown away by how genuinely awesome that looks. And something really cool where the lower jaw is supposed to attach to the upper jaw is actually able to attach lightning to. So Jay can actually have lightning coming down off of his shoulder blades. And then for this hand, he just has a next knight shield and a place to hold a katana. Again, very similar to Zane's mech, this one's a little bit more different than Lloyd's mech was, but the overall design is very close to the same thing. On the other side though, this is where things get more unique. We have another upside down jaw piece, which I think looks amazing. More lightning coming down off of that too. Like, I just love seeing this guy stand up with the lightning coming out of each side. I feel like it adds a ton of personality. But anyway, moving back down the arm, you have a little bit of blue armor right here, and then he has these two fingers with lightning shooting out of them. I feel like this is a really fun mech weapon concept, and I really want to incorporate Jay's elemental power in one way or another. And I'm very happy with this result. But obviously, of course, the arm itself can be swung, and then the lightning on top of the fingers can be moved to, like, face whatever it's targeting. And then there's the back of the mech, lots of light yellow on this one. Yeah, I'm super happy with how this guy turned out. Alright, next move to Cole's mech, and I'm actually impressed by how good this one turned out. As I said earlier, I was very concerned that there wouldn't be enough black pieces, and there wasn't a ton, but between gold and brown and black and orange, I feel like I was able to tie it together and it still feels like it fits Cole pretty well. Now, one thing I will say about this one is this could never be its own LEGO set. There's a lot of things here that are on the more fragile side, and that's the kind of thing that would not get past LEGO's quality control. However, this is not an official LEGO set, this is a mock, so I can do those things. 
is. And it was either have things like that, or just have it not look that great. But yeah, my goal with Cole was to make his mech really bulky, and I think I succeeded in that. The feet of the mech use a variety of different parts, but I feel like they provide a nice bit of stability and fit Cole pretty well. And coming up with the legs, you can see I tried to cover up a lot of the studs with like ingots and whatnot, to give it sort of like a concrete feel where it's like a lot of little stones stuck inside it. And I think that helped make it distinct from the armor on both Zane's and Lloyd's mechs. Yeah, and of course I made the legs symmetrical on both sides. Coming up to the torso, I used the gold cockpit piece from Lloyd's 4 Plus Mac, that one fit Cole the best. And I have to admit, I did cheat a little bit. I know I said I was only going to use parts in the Evo sets, but I had to use a few parts from a non-Evo set, because funnily enough, Cole himself does not come in any Evo sets. So if I want to make a mech for every ninja using only parts from Evo sets, I cannot put Cole in this mech, because there is no Cole in any Evo set. But no, the Cole minifigure is the only non-Evo set part that I used. Every other part comes from one of the sets you saw me pull out of that box. Coming to the arms, I decided to do something really wacky with them. I wanted to put these giant wheels at the top to be just like giant shoulder armor. Are they practical? No. But do they look really cool? I think so. And then I just tried to add some extra bulk to the arms as well, and you can see that actually really restricts movement. You can't put the arm all the way down, which for a toy in general I don't think would be great, but I feel like it's a nice way to make Cole's mech so distinct from the others. And there is still a good range of posability, it's just a little bit more limited. So you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments, but personally I feel like this was a good solution, it actually looks really fun. At the very end of this armor, I attached a gold armor piece. Uh, Lloyd and Zane both have this gold armor in a different place, so I thought it'd be cool to have it down here instead. And this is where you can attach Cole's katana. And then on the other arm, I have that same wheel shoulder blade piece. And then moving down to the lower part of the hand on this mech, this one is unfortunately affected by too few parts. But I wanted to give him posable fingers, because there was a lot of, like, Lego mechs that have that, but none of the core mechs do. And I feel like that would fit Cole pretty well if he'd be able to, like, pick up enemies. So these two fingers at the top are able to be hinged on a clip. And then the one at the bottom is on a ball joint. They don't look amazing, but I feel like they fit Cole well enough and do fit the overall, like, rocky, earthy feel. This engine piece is right here, because I feel like there's an overall, like, mechanical vibe of this mech with the wheels and everything. And then there's this gray piece right here, because I feel like that looks like a rock and fits Cole pretty well. And you know, despite the hand being a little bit funny looking, you can't actually pick up enemies in it, which was the most important part to me. And there's how that mech looks in the back, again, very similar style to the others. Though you can see it does have some distinct shapes in there. Yeah, despite the very limited parts I had available to me for this mech for this challenge, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. I think it looks pretty good. I'm very, very curious to hear what you guys think of this one. Alright, and then the final mech I have to show you all is Nia's. So this one is the tallest and sleekest of the mechs. It's also the one with the least amount of gold on it. The only gold on the entire thing is on the banner. And the goal with this one was agility. I wanted to make it look like this mech could swim through water if it wanted to. And actually, my original intention was for you to be able to put the feet together to make like a fishtail. However, I built the feet before I built the body and I forgot that like the hips are going to prevent that. But yeah, when I was I had the idea of putting the legs together like this and creating somewhat of a fishtail, and then, like, actually it's able to swing back and forth. And I thought that was fun, but unfortunately it didn't translate into the final build. However, I still think the feet work, so I decided to keep them rather than change them up. They're definitely way different from all the other ones, but I think they look good and they actually fit the style of this mech pretty well. Coming up the legs, you can see there was very, very light texturing. Most, if not all, these blue parts came from the J Evo Dragon, but luckily they fit Nia pretty darn well. Then, getting up to the body, you can see I did use the gunmetal cockpit piece from the enemy vehicles, and I was correct in that there was little to no other gunmetal parts in any of the other sets. So that's why this mech is mostly blue, there's very little gunmetal. If I had every piece at my disposal and I wasn't just limited to Evo set pieces, I might have had more gunmetal in this build. But you know what, I actually think it turned out alright. But yeah, of course, just like all the others, this hinges down and that's where Nia is kept. And you can see the seat behind her I kind of wanted to make look like rippling waves. Putting her back in there and closing her back up though, now let's take a look at the arms. The right arm is very, very simple. I do like how I did this transition. I feel like the armor covers up the actual joint of the arm pretty well. But the way the sword is held, I admit, is very silly and basic. However, this is quite similar to the way the Kai mech does it, so I don't feel like that's out of the realm of like what LEGO would do. So I do think it still fits the mech well enough. I could have done the same thing to it that I did to the J mech and the Lloyd mech that was on the Zane mech originally. However, I wouldn't have an equal balance of ones attached with clips and ones attached on ball joints, so Nia's, Kai's, and Cole's are all attached somewhat similarly to this. And then on the other arm, I wanted to attach a water cannon at the very end, because one of the few gunmetal gray pieces in the sets was actually a stud shooter. So I added this chain going from the torso to the arm just to be an extra little bit of detail. And the arm itself is very similar to the other one, but it has a ball joint at the end. And you can see inside there's trans blue studs to be shot out. I wish I had more color variety in it, but I think the whole stud shooter arm is one of the best looking weapons I made from any of these, so I'm very happy with it. And then finally, just like all the other ones, there is how the Nia mech looks from the back. Yeah, given what I had, I'm actually pretty happy with this one. I like how I was sort of able to create like a ripple design going up her legs and down her arms. It fits the whole water aesthetic really well, and I think the stud shooter really fits 
fits her. All right, and here's a look at all six mechs lined up together. I think they go together pretty well, like they feel like one cohesive line. I think of all the ones I created, Jay's and Cole's definitely my favorites, but overall I'm satisfied with all four. Let me know in the comments what you think of my custom mechs and like which one's your favorite, and do you have any suggestions on how to improve them? Again, I want to remind you all this is using only parts from the Evo sets, the ones you saw earlier in this video, so of course I don't have every single LEGO piece available to me, but considering what I had available to me, I think this all turned out pretty nice. I spent a pretty long time working on this video, so please guys let me know what you think of this video format, what you think of like custom builds on the channel if you want to see more content like this, and if you do enjoy this type of content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If this video hits a thousand likes, maybe you'll see a sequel. I could try maybe making a mech for Pixel and Woo, or I can try making it for the bad guys, the snakes. So if you'd like to see any of that, let me know in the comments. And then finally, to end off this video, I want to announce a giveaway that I'm doing. So I have two Ninjago sets to give away. They're not really tied into this video, but I'm just giving them away here because I meant to give them away in December, but then they didn't arrive in time. So regardless, they're finally happening now. I'm giving away the Jungle Dragon and the Fire Dragon, two of my favorite sets of 2021. So how can you win these sets? I want you guys to make your own custom Ninjago Evo Max. Now you guys don't have to follow the same rules I did. You can use any parts you want, but make sure it fits it's in the Evo range. Don't make it too big or too complicated. Make sure it would fit alongside these guys. It could be for any of the six ninja. You can even just upgrade Kaiser Zanes. Or you can make one for a character I didn't include in this video. It doesn't even have to be a Ninjago character. Just make your own custom Evo mech that would fit alongside these guys. Take pictures showcasing the mech and post it to Instagram. And make sure to use the hashtag Mines Evo Mech Contest. And then I don't have an exact cutoff time yet, but sometime in early May, I'll take a look at all the entries and pick a winner. A few more rules you must be located in the US to get the prize international shipping is expensive, I can't get the sets out to you guys, sorry. So if you want a chance to actually win the sets, you do have to be in the US to receive them. You also must be 13 or older to enter, and if you're not, have someone who is 13 or older enter on your behalf. And then of course you also must be subscribed to the Bricks by Mind YouTube channel and be following the Bricks by Mind Instagram page. But yeah, just make your very best custom email back, and I can't wait to see what you guys got. You guys are definitely going to show me up and make these look like trash. But that's okay, I'm very, very excited to see what you got. But as for this video, I think that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed, press that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do LEGO and Ninjago videos like this almost every day, so if you subscribe, I'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!